‫באוניברסיטת הביטוי ועל הברגל. ‫אז קודם כול, ‫בוקר טוב לכולם, ‫זום מיטינג, ‫שאנחנו לא עשינו כמה שנים ‫בגלל הסמר. ‫הסמר הזה יהיה באנגלית, ‫כי יש לנו חברים ‫שאין להם 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 If you have difficulties understanding what I explain in English, you want an explanation in Hebrew, stop me. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to explain it in Hebrew. If you want to ask a question and you don't feel comfortable asking it in English, you can either write it down and ask, or ask me in Hebrew, and I'm going to translate and explain it in Hebrew, in English, whatever languages we need. I forgot my Arabic, so don't ask me to explain in Arabic. I forgot all of it. Uh, okay. So, uh, the reason that we all uh, gather here today is to discuss uh, real estate financing for commercial real estate, not for residential, it's different. I will explain the differences between commercial and residential just a little bit, but we're gonna focus today on commercial real estate. We're gonna explain some terms in commercial financing And we're gonna try to explain, hopefully we're gonna succeed to explain why there is such a crisis in the commercial real estate financing world. And how is it an opportunity for us as buyer, buyers, sorry, and investors to pick up in the next couple of years to pick up good deals, commercial deals versus residential commercial. We're talking just commercial deals. In, uh, uh, in the United States, that's gonna be the biggest thing, I think, for the next year or two. So it's not something that is uh, uh, right now, it's something that's gonna uh, happen the next couple of years. It's already started, by the way, but uh, uh, we can see it happening. Whoever deal with commercial real estate can see it happen. And Kevin just gave us an example for a situation like this. Uh, How many here already tried or been involved in commercial uh, real estate financing in the past? Give me indication. Saroni, I know for sure. Anybody else? Kevin, I know. I got two out of, I don't, many, I don't know how many of us uh, uh, here. Uh, we got two. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put all of you guys on mute. Uh, Just so we're not going to have any noise on the background. If you guys want to uh, ask a question, just take yourself out of mute, ask whatever you want, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, and we'll start with some basic stuff, which is the terms in real estate financing. Uh, and the reason that I'm going to start with terms in real estate financing for commercial is just so we can have on the same page and we're going to say something out. Something people can understand what I'm talking about. Here we go. Everybody see the presentation? It's a very short presentation. Everybody see it? I'll take it as a yes. Yes. So if you give me yes. a, a thumbs up. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, and let's start with, uh, uh, with some terms. NOI. This is a very basic, uh, basic term in real estate financing, NOI, net operating income. Net operating income in general, just so you know, is a number that I get if I'm taking all the rent that I picked up, all the rent that I collected, and deduct the operating expenses out of it. What is operating expenses? Taxes, insurance, uh, maintenance, water, sewer, garbage, okay? So I take all the rent that I, I collected, I take all my operating expenses, and what I'm gonna get out of it is NOI, net operating income. Why we call it operating income? Because it, the expenses that I'm calculating does not include mortgage payment, okay? Mortgage is not an operating expense. From NOI, I'm gonna take off a, a debt service, mortgage payment, okay? And what I'm gonna get is a cash flow, okay? So we have EGI, effective gross income, how much income I collected. I'm gonna take, deduct 
expenses, operating expenses, everything that it doesn't include a mortgage payment, that service, and I'm gonna get NOI, net operating income, okay? So that's the uh, term number one to remember. Cap rate, what's called capitalization rate, is the yield that is I want or I'm getting from that property based on the NOI. So how much I paid for it divided by NOI, I'm gonna get, uh, sorry, NOI divided, I'm gonna get me the cap rate. What is my return? Why is that important for us? Because in commercial real estate, the way that we evaluate value of a property is based on the NOI. And if I'm gonna take the NOI and I'm gonna divide it by cap rate, I'm gonna get value. Okay, so let's say the acceptable cap rate in New York is 6% and my NOI is 100 grand, uh, $100,000 divided by 6% will give you the value for that property. Question until here, basic stuff. Question, question, questions, no questions until here. I know somebody just uh, joined us, oh, I think, hope if you missed something, I need to uh, uh, repeat it, let me know. Next, so here we go. $100,000 divided by cap rate, I do an hour 6% and I'm getting a value of 1.66666. So if I'm gonna pay 1.6 and I'm getting 100,000, my return will be 6%. Okay? I'll take it as a yes. I got that, da, 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 da. I get recording if you don't mind. I'll get the recording if you don't mind. That's fine. Whatever works for you all works for us. We are very flexible. Next is LTV. LTV means loan to value. Loan to value, it depends if this is a purchase loan or refinance. If it's a purchase loan, it's gonna be, the value will be the purchase price. If this is a refinance, it's gonna be based on whatever the appraisal come. So they're gonna send an appraisal to the property, whatever value is gonna come, it's gonna be the percentage from that amount. So usually we'll see on a, on a commitment letter, we're gonna take a look at it. It says 840, but not, not more than 70%. So loan to value, percentage from the value. In this case, if you have a million dollar deal, it doesn't matter if I buy it for a million or it was evaluated as a million dollar and the bank give me 70% LTV, it means 70% from one, for $1 million and we're gonna get $700,000. Question about LTV. No question about LTV. Okay, no problem. First, debt service is the mortgage payment. Okay, debt service, debt service, or debt service coverage. That is how much. What is my mortgage payment? Either on annual basis or monthly basis depends what I'm looking at. But that is a, a loan payment. Debt service coverage ratio is a factor that express the ratio between the NOI and the annual mortgage payment, okay? So let's say my NOI is $100,000 and my debt service, how much I'm paying on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis is 80 grand. The debt service coverage ratio will be 100 divided by 80,000, 1.25. Why is that important? Because the banks, when they calculate the amount of mortgage and your payment would like this factor to be 1.2 or above. Okay, that's a requirement. Uh, sorry guys, I'm gonna stop for a second. We have some people that try to join. So let me, let me make sure that everybody that wanted to join, join us. Yeah, okay. Uh, where, where were we? Okay. The bank have a minimum debt service coverage ratio, which is 1.2% usually. So they want this, uh, this factor to be 1.2 and above. And if it becomes under it, 
they're gonna lower your loan amount in order to lower your monthly, the payment amount. So the factor gonna go up to at least 1.2. That's very important to, remember, to understand. If you don't understand it, let me know now. So we can explain it again. Gil, are we clear about that? Yeah. If anybody didn't understand that service coverage ratio? That's very important to understand. This is why I'm stopping here. Everybody understand, great. Amortization, Alan Daniel. Amortization is a paying off of the principle of the loan. In Hebrew, we call it the Luach Spitzer or Luach Silukin. In English, it's called amortization. It's the schedule that allow me to pay off my loan over time. So usually for a, a regular residential properties, that 30 years, right? I'm taking a mortgage for 30 years. If I'm paying my mortgage over 30 years, uh, at the end, I owe nothing. So my amortization schedule is for 30 years. That's what it means. We good? We good. I trust you guys to stop me if something is not clear. Balloon mortgage. There is a lot of confusion about balloon mortgage because a lot of people think that balloon mortgage is mortgage that there is no principal payment. That's not true. Balloon mortgage means that the last payment, and I love, I'm gonna explain how it happened in just a second. The last payment is a very big payment. This is why it's called a balloon, it's, like, it's a big payment. So it's not a regular payment like you have when you uh, take a loan for a private house, that the mortgage usually is the same over 30 years. Commercial properties, usually it's a balloon mortgage. So there is some small payment and then there is a, the last payment we'll discuss in just a second is a big payment, okay? So that is a balloon mortgage. And we have a maturity date. Maturity date is the date that you need to make your last payment. So far, so good? Yes, okay. I'll, I'm gonna stop here for a second. And we're gonna discuss for a second the differences between residential mortgages and commercial mortgages. When you say renegotiate, Opt ask me, can you renegotiate balloon payment? I'm gonna explain about it one second. How, how do we get to a balloon payment and what can we do about it? Okay, so let's start with how do we get in commercial mortgages, how we get even to the fact that there is a balloon payment. When I take a loan for residential property, it's usually a 30 years loan, which I'm gonna pay. I have a mortization schedule for 30 years. I'm actually making payment for 30 years. At the end of this payment, I owe the bank nothing. The house is what's called free and clear. When we are taking, and this is important to remember and understand, so, so I'm gonna do it slowly. And, and if I need to explain it more than once, let me know. When I'm taking commercial loan, we usually have the amortization schedule based on 25 years or 30 years. It's like I'm paying it for 25 or 30 years. This is how the payments are built. But, and this is a big but, I need to close a loan in five or 10 or 15 years. Which means when I'm gonna get to my maturity date, let's say I took a loan for 10 years. When I'm gonna get to my maturity date, the last day that I need to make my last payment, it's only 10 years. Since, since my amortization was scheduled based on 25 years, I didn't pay all my loan. I'm gonna have to pay one big, lump sum at the end of the 10 years. Anybody, under, everybody understand that? Why? If not, I'll explain it again. I'll explain it again. Can you repeat? So you said you take for the commercial for 30 years. Let's say, let, you, you know what guys, let, let's, try to do an, let, let's try to do an example here, okay? 
I'm going to try to do an example. Let's see if it's going to be easier to understand this one. And we like it's going to make it clear why. Okay. Let's say I take a residential loan. Okay. Residential loan. The loan itself is let's say a million dollars. Okay, this is an this is just an example. Don't don't get stick to the numbers itself. Try to understand the idea. So I'm starting to paint it here, number one, and then let's say I'm I'm gonna do uh, twenty years instead of uh, uh, thirty, just so so it's not gonna be. Okay, so basically I need to break this million dollar into 20 years because by the end of the 20 years, I paid all of it. So I'm gonna do that gonna be that divided by 20, more or less. So let's say if I'm paying, I'm sorry, apologize, my mistake. So if I'm going to pay $50,000 every year for 20 years, at the end, I paid all of it, right? Everybody agree with me? Everybody agree with me? Yeah, and the interest? I'm saying ignore right now the, the win. <laughs> okay, let's got say, it. Let's say it's include the interest for that argument. Got it, got okay? it, for that argument. But when I take a commercial loan, which the, the, the amortization schedule is 20 years, okay? My payment is still $50,000, but let's Tal, say- Tal, I'm sorry, Tal, I'm sorry. Could you use an example like a, like a current commercial, like a five year right now, what we're having? Okay, so I'm saying, let's say I took a million dollar, a million dollar loan, okay? The amortization is the same, it's for 20 years, but the term is only five or 10 years. So if the amortization, the schedule is like I'm paying it for 20 years, I'm still gonna pay only $50,000 a year, right? We saw the, we did the calculation here, that's the payment, but I'm paying it only, let's say the schedule, the term, or my maturity date is in 10 years. So I'm paying the $50,000 for nine years. But in how much, how much did I pay so far? So far I paid $450,000. Yeah. What will be my payment at year number five? 650. No, 550. I owe them exactly a million dollar. I paid them 450. So I owe them 550. That's a balloon payment. We understand that? But from where? You get the 550. Excellent if question. We'll get to pay within nine Excellent years. Excellent question. We'll get to. Excellent question. We'll get to. This is the opportunity. <laughs> this this is opportunity. Exactly. This is the opportunity. I just want you guys to understand the difference in what with with amortization in term for commercial versus residential. This is all I want you guys to understand now. How, what, how I'm getting to this 550 that I asked me question, and this is the opportunity that we're going to discuss in just a second. Question until now, I get some questions. So you are saying that your payment is less than 25 years term amortization with a balance due at the end of agreed 10 years payment schedule. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, I'm paying it on a yearly basis, like I'm paying it 25 years, but I also agreed to give them a big payment at the end of year number 10 or 15 or five, whatever it is. So you understand exactly. 
Okay, oh, that was a, a, a day. It's best on a 25 years, not term, 25 years amortization. Term is how long it is, where is my maturity date? Amortization is what is the schedule, okay? So yes, I'm doing the calculation like I'm paying it 25 years, oops, but I'm agreeing to make a one big lump sum payment at the end of the term, which is usually the five, 10 or 15, whatever you agreed on, okay? So I'm not paying all of my principal until my maturity date. Everybody understand that? This is very important to understand this balloon payment at the end. Everybody understand that? Question, question, questions? Nothing. Okay, we good? We good, okay, perfect. You guys want to see how it looks on a, on a, on a, let's take a look one second on, on, a, a, on a real commitment letter from a bank. So you guys, I don't know if any of you had the chance to take a look ever on the commitment letter of the bank. So this is the commitment letter that I got last week. This is a, a for 20 a unit building we're buying in, a, in, a, in Rochester, you can see the address here. This is a brand new commitment letter. You guys see it? I need to uh, to zoom in. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Oh, here we go. So you can see here. So here the borrower, and it says here, maximum principal. So we're talking about the amount now, talking about LTVs. Maximum principal of a loan will be $840,000, but not exceed 70% of the leaser purchase price as is appraised, which means I'm telling them I'm buying this 70% 840, it's $1.2 million, just so you know. So I'm telling them I'm buying it for $1.2 million. I want a 70%. So I say, okay, no problem. We'll give you 840, which is 70%. But if the appraiser gonna come under 1.2, also, the loan is going to go down to 70% of what the appraisal said. So let's say the appraiser is going to come and say, no, 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 no. You're buying it for 1.2, but I estimate the value of the building only at $1 million. The bank is going to come and say, it's not going to be 840. The maximum that I'm going to give you will be 700. So it's whatever lower. If the bank is going to come and say, oh, the building was 1.5 million, I can negotiate and say, listen, guys, I don't need more because anyway, I'm buying it for 1.2. I don't need more than 840. I can, I want the 840, all of it. Okay. Now, Opa had another question. Can you transfer the debt if you have multiple properties to get rid of the balloon payment? That's uh, something that you're going to have to discuss with your bank. Uh, each bank uh, have his own uh, uh, way of doing things. Some of them let you uh, transfer and uh, use collateral. Some of them not. You can extend it. You can uh, you can do whatever. It depends on the bank. So I don't have a yes or no question uh, answer for you. Okay. So here they're giving me eight hundred and forty thousand dollars, which is can be more than 70% of the value, okay? The purpose here, they define the purpose of the loan and they are telling me term 15 years. So my maturity day will be 15 years from the day that I took the loan, okay? So I'm taking, I think I wrote down that it's 10 years when I uh, put it on the WhatsApp or whatever it is, it's actually 15 years, it's better for me, it's 15%. Gil, you ask about floating rate, right? Yeah. So floating rate means that the rates are changing. So every five years, my, my, my interest rate on this loan, which right now is 7%, gonna be adjusted based on what's going on in the market, not less than 7%. So basically say, if it goes up, we'll go up. If it does, if it goes down, we're not going to go down. That also can be negotiated, but just usually what it means. But that's what it means a floating rate. It changes based on what's going on in the market. Okay, and you can see it here. 
interest change it for me, uh, uh, no less than 5%, I'm sorry, I said 7%, no less, and it changes every five years, okay? In fits for the first five years. So every five years it changes. Okay, good, that's floating rate. It changes every five years, so okay. it depends, okay? And for that argument, uh, for that uh, conversation, my amortization period is 25 years. So my schedule is based on 25 years, but I need to pay it in 15, which means in year 15, I'm gonna to have to come up with a nice big payment. Tal. Yes. On the, on the 15 year, you will pay the big payment plus all the interest of the 25 years. Of less, whatever, less whatever, the, whatever the balance is in that point. No, usually, no, I don't pay the future interest. That just the balance for the just the balance for the principal. I don't pay future interest. So ah, okay. So so you take a longer maturity, a longer uh, amortization, so the, 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 the monthly payment will be less. Yes. It's to improve my cash flow. I see. Wow, that's nice. But then I'm going to have to figure out a solution in year 15 how to pay this lump sum of whatever I still owe them. Okay? Can you negotiate? Can you negotiate so the interest will be um, uh, be the same? It depends, the, on the bank, the depends on the loan. Today they tend not to do it because the uh, uh, loans are changing, the interest rates are changing. Going back a couple of years, you can take uh, one big uh, one uh, uh, a loan for the entire period. So it depends on the market and where they are in the market. Okay. Today they more tend to do floating rates than, uh, but again it's for five years. I can tell you one thing that I did with this bank, assuming that the mortgage gonna go down in two, three years, the uh, interest rate gonna go down in two years. I don't have a prepayment penalty. I can close this loan in any given moment without paying penalty. Usually if you want to close a loan early, the bank gonna ask you for a penalty to recover some of their losses because you don't hold the loan for, for a very long time. Yeah. In this case, uh, and one, the, one of the reasons that I'm working with, with this bank is they don't have a prepayment penalty. So in an environment of high interest rate, it's good because if two, three, four years down the road, interest rate can drop, I can go back to them and say, listen, guys, either you guys gonna adjust my interest right now and, and, and lower it, or I'm just gonna go and financing with somebody else for less interest, right? Usually what they're gonna do is they're gonna lower it because they don't wanna lose the business. They're gonna match the market. Now, is there is any reason that uh, you take the mortgage from a bank uh, versus uh, if you take any loan from a private lender? Whatever the, the, whatever the terms of the loan is better. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take a loan based there is so many uh, uh, things involved in taking a loan. Do you want prepayment? Some some of them are gonna say, listen, if I'm getting an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, interest rate, but I have a prepayment penalty, maybe it's better to take it from somebody that will taking prepayment penalty because a loan for 2%, I know that I'm not gonna close it for the next two, three years. So it's not important for me. If the interest rate is, is higher, Maybe it's better for me to go to a bank that maybe charged higher but doesn't have a prepayment penalty because I know I'm going to close it in two years. So you need to look at what type of a loan, how long you want it, what is the interest rate, prepayment penalty. You take all of this into consideration when making a decision. So when I'm I'm considering a new loan, I'm approaching three or four banks and say, okay, what can you offer me? And then I'm sitting with myself, okay. with my mortgage guy and say, okay, what is a better deal here? And my broker, my, my, my mortgage brokers are people that I trust enough to tell me, Tal, you have a better solution somewhere else than mine. So they don't try to push my 
they're loan to me. And if they see that I get a better deal somewhere else, they're gonna usually tell me, Tal, this is a better deal for you than what I have, go and do that. Okay. Okay. Question until here? No. Hey, hey Tal. Um, so how many exit strategy you, you basically have uh, from like when the mortgage will be mature? So you have refinance and, and selling. Do you have any other exit strategies? Uh, yes. Okay. So that brings us to Gil, the, to Gil question. How do I pay this when I get there? So the two most common way, ways are is a refinance or sell the property. Okay. 99% of the deal, this is what's going to happen. Either you're going to refinance it, take the new loan, pay the old loan. Mm -hmm and keep holding the building. Option number right. two is I'm going to sell it and use the percentage from the sale to pay the mortgage and whatever leftover is mine. Of course, there is a third way to do it, which is to bring money out of your pocket and pay. Not okay. a lot of people can do it, so I'm going to put this in the, aside and I'm going to say refinance or sell. And this is a tricky part. If I want to use, to use refinance to pay the old loan, the new loan need to be what compared to the old loan or what I owe? Need to be? Bigger. Bigger, great <laughs> answer. You have to be bigger than what I owe. Can we agree on that? Can we agree on that? Yes. Why it has to be bigger? So you can use the money to, to, to play with the rest of you, the money? You don't necessarily, but you need to be a deal equivalent to what I owe. Right. Or bigger. Right. right. Okay. And uh, uh, another short question. H how long uh, you start looking for a new loan ahead? So It depends on the market. If you are today, I would say if I was in a position that maturity comes today, I would start at least six months before. Okay. I would start at least six months before because the banks are so slow and you can start with the bank and they tell you no and yes and yes and no. And the, you need the environmental. If you took lo a loan 10 years ago and uh, you didn't need environmental and you need environmental today and you need to do a phase two, that three months. Environment is okay. a different story. I can discuss it at the end, but just so you know that there is factor that change and it takes time today. If I was somebody that need to refinance six months down the road, I would start uh, shopping for a loan today. Okay, thank I can you. I tell you that last November, so almost a year ago, I was in a process on a loan for three months the bank unrelated to me specifically because of the market what's going on in the market a lot of banks stop giving loan they just stop giving loan it happened a week before my closing so a week before my closing they stopped giving loans cancel my loan a, a week before the closing and i have to stop shopping around again for a new loan after three months working with them Wow. So you got to take that into consideration. It cost me about $20,000 in damages. I had to uh, extend my old loan, uh, interest rate, uh, uh, fees, stuff like that. It cost me about 20 grand. This is the fact that they, a week before the closing, literally a week before the closing, which was a Friday. I even remember when, where I was. I spoke with the CEO that like, we're not giving any more loans. And I had to start the process all over again with a different bank. Okay, so let's use an example. Let's go back to our... Uh, uh, so now I'm gonna try to explain to you how this mess happened. And we're gonna- Can you zoom in a little bit? And we're gonna use an example for that. Okay. 
So let's say I was an investor five years ago and I bought a building with a 4% interest rate, which four or five years ago was a acceptable rate. We can all agree, I think, about it. My amortization was 25 years. My term was five years, which is again a common thing. So our balloon is in five years. And I took it with a LTV, 75% LTV. Okay. Also acceptable LTV five years ago. So I bought the building for $3.3 million, 75% LTV, $2.5 million loan, 4% interest rate, 25% 25 years amortization, five year loan. My debt service was $158,000. I had an NOI of $200,000, which means my debt service covered rate was a little bit over $1.2 million. Acceptable a situation to buy a property. Can we agree on that? Everybody on the same page? Everybody have any uh, uh, issue with that deal five years ago? No, everybody acceptable for everybody. Okay. So now we're going five years down the road. Okay, that was my deal, right? And my debt was $2.5 million. Now there was a little bit of amortization into it, but because it's the first five years, everybody know how amortization go. I paid at the beginning more interest, less, amortiz less principal. At the end of the life of the loan, it's more principal, less interest. Everybody know how this amortization uh, 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 looks like? No, I'll take it as a no. Give me guys one second. Okay. This is the amortization chart, okay? So let's say I have a, a fixed payment, $1,000, okay, whatever it is. The way that the bank split it is that at the beginning of my payment, beginning of my the first, first year, most of this payment is interest and very little is principal. And over time, the share or the, the, the portion of the interest from that thousand dollar go down and the portion of the principal goes up. Is that clear or you guys understand it? So let's say in total, I owe the bank a million dollar and a million dollar in interest, $2 million. A million dollars is principal, a million dollars in the interest. I'm gonna pay the million dollars in interest for most of it at the beginning of the loan and the principal at the end of the loan. Everybody understand this concept? Yeah. Somebody said no. Yes. Who said no? Nobody said no, okay. And then, I was lying, nobody said no. I just want to see if somebody knows. It's fine. Uh, okay. So even the fact that there is amortization into my schedule, I'm, I'm gonna ignore it for a second because the first five years, we don't pay that much of principal. So I owe to two and a half million dollar, right? I took a two and a half million dollar loan. When I'm gonna take the loan, I'm gonna have to pay closing cost on the loan about 5%, that's cause. So I'm gonna need five years down the road in order to refinance this deal, about $2.6 million. Can 
Can we agree on that? Question about that? No. Good. Hope, I hope I'm, uh, we're on the same page here. If not, stop me. Whoever, somebody else. Okay, so now let's see what really happened. And this is very, very tricky. So my NOI went up, let's say, inflation-wise, 3% every year. So now we are at the end of year number five. My cap rate is still 6%. The value of the building right now is $3.7 million. I bought it for 3.3, it was it was now $3.7 million. And I wanna take a 75% loan to value, a loan that is loan to value, which is gonna be $2.8 million. I need 2.6, remember I need 2.6 minimum. But what happened to the interest rate in the last five years? The interest rate went from four to seven. And if I'm using the same amortization, my loan payment now is about $238,000 a year. When my NOI is only two to five. which means my loan payment is higher than the money that I have to pay. My debt service coverage ratio went, on, went down from 1.26 to 0 0.9, it's less than one. Anybody think there is a bank that's gonna approve this loan? No. So now I need to see what number, what loan number gonna bring me to a debt service coverage ratio of 1.2, which is the minimum required by the bank, right? So let's start taking this 75% down and we're gonna put 70%, which this is what, when you buy a building today, this is what the bank willing to give you. I am at $2.6 million. I'm still okay with the amount, but am I at 1.2? Not yet. Is the bank gonna approve it? No. So let's start going to 60%. I'm at 2.25, am I at 1.2? Still no. 55, oh, I got. So we're somewhere between 55% and 60. Let's do 58, here we go. 59, 59. So let's say it's 59%, but how much money do I need to close the loan? 2.6. How much do I have? 2.2. If I have, I mean all, In order for me to finance this building, I need to find out $400,000. And this is on a, two million, a $3 million deal. Try to imagine this is a $30 million deal. And this is the, uh, the main issue that we have right now in the market. Properties can, can't up come with enough money from refinance to pay their own loans. This so you, so you, thing right so, now, this is a problem. The so then you can only get, come cash out of pocket or, or sell the building? How many people you can you think can come up with $400,000 out of the pocket to buy this, to, to refinance this building? Well, not me. Not most of them. Not most of them. And this is here, they are pretty much break even. They don't even have much. So if you don't have $400,000, try to take this and put it 10 times and $30 million. $30 million in New York, it's uh, in, in New York. In, in the United States, that's a medium sized deal. 3 million, that's small. 30 million, that's a medium sized deal. Not a medium, medium to big. You are $4 million.
you need to come up with more than 10% of the value of the building just to refinance it. And you got to ask yourself what happened five years down the road. So now they are left over with only one option, which is, we said one option was to refinance it. And the second option is? Sell. Selling. Sell it. Okay. And this is now the trick. Now look, look at what the trick is. This building we said should worth $3.7 million. Do we agree on that? Yeah. But if the, I'm a buyer and the bank is willing to give me only 70% LTV, right? If, yes. If 2.2 is 70%, what is 100%? Come on, Ophir, you are the three... you're our number guy. If 70% is isn't it the 3751? What? Yeah. No. 3.14. 3.14. When I'm gonna go and give him an offer, the offer will be for how much? 3.14. Because I'm doing deals, 70% LTV is from the bank, 30% out of my pocket. What is the value of this property right now in the market? 3.14. How much did he bought it five years ago? 3.3. 3.3. We have a problem. Houston. You can buy today properties below the value of them five years ago. This is what they're going to happen to the market. Do you see it happening already? Yes. You want to see? Yeah. In Houston, I did, I, I don't see it happening already. Not I yet. mean, I know it makes sense. First, uh, first of all, it's just starting. You can see it more in office buildings because it's deeper in the hall than, than residential, but you definitely see it in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, residential. If you're gonna go today and start talking to owners that can refinance, it just is the beginning for residential. Mm -hmm. It's relatively the beginning, but over time it's gonna accumulate more properties gonna come to the market the maturity date, gonna the approach the maturity date, they're gonna get more stress. So as time passes, more properties, the maturity date get, getting closer, they're gonna come to the market. So times will be a factor here. But... And according to Powell, the interest rates are on their way up still. Still on the way up because they didn't finish with it. Yeah. Here. You want to see? So that's not all of it because of a... Uh, of, uh, uh... One second, why I don't see it. We don't have the valuation. I uploaded a video from a guy now. It's uh, with this guy. Are you, Daniel, you're in the, he has a 15 unit building 
He had a $9 million loan on it. He went to the bank right now. They told him that they're going to give him 2.5 against a $9 million loan. They're yeah, the to video refinance only $2.5 million. From the All In podcast. Yeah. He took a $9 million loan. They're willing to give him now to refinance only a, a portion of it, 2.5. Lucky for him, he has more than enough money to pay it out of his pocket. But uh, if, you are not the, if you are not him and you didn't uh, uh, start at uh, uh, PayPal, you're probably, you, you're probably in a big, big trouble. And as longer the IRS, the, the way it's going to go up and longer it's going to take to go down, more property going to be, the maturing date from properties going to come due, more property going to face this uh, uh, scenario where they go back to the bank and say, okay, let's refinance. And I can tell you with Louis, uh, we discussed that with Louis, uh, and Louis, uh, uh, when we are going using Costa, we're going to property that maturity date comes, uh, and you see, you can see that the debt service uh, went under 1.2. So you can see that their, their, their NOI is below 1.2 already. And- oh, I got a question. Yes. Uh, given this uh, situation, so a couple of questions actually. Do you think that Wall Street is not eyeing this and they're not just going to scoop everything out? What are you talking about? And that's question number one. Okay. The other question is, so how do you explain why everybody is like running into new construction like crazy and- Residentials. It's residential, uh, uh, the, the bank. Don't don't uh, 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 don't mix residential and commercial. We're talking but if about, I'm like I'm talking about big developers like Lenai, Dr. Horton, Res residential. The bank, the building residential, not commercial. Uh, this is from last week. This is literally from August 15th. I upload this as well, this article as well, I think. Huge funds ready for this. You guys need to understand, everybody's on this. If you are, if you know what's going on in the market, everybody's on this. Everybody understand what's going on in the market. All the focus shifted to two things. New construction for residential. Warren Buffett just bought $800 million in shares, one of the biggest uh, developers in the US uh, because lack of, because people that have houses, low interest, not selling them, the lack of opportunities to buy houses, people go to new construction. The second part, commercial to buy for cheap. So this is from last week. So if so you ask about Wall Street, Wall Street all over this. Right. So, what what chance do you know uh, medium small investors like us have, other than getting all the scrapes, like you know, just leftovers? <laughs> uh, first of all, I always believe that there is an opportunity. Uh, your chances: be first, be active, be not active, be proactive. The phone calls, uh, talking to people, uh, some people, I don't know, I hate Wall Street. Oh, I'm just a small guy. Oh, I like you because of that. You never know. Our job as an investor, and I said it many, many times, my job as an investor, not to think why somebody else wants to sell it to me, is just to give him the opportunity to approach him and tell him, if you like to sell it, I'm interested in buying it. I can't control what they have in their mind. I can't control what somebody else offering them. I can't do all of that. The only thing that I can do is put myself out there as somebody experienced that looking to buy the property of the like to My job is to give them that opportunity. So I'm calling them, I'm sending them letters, I'm meeting them, I'm discussing it with them. Hopefully they're gonna be, somebody gonna say yes 
historically, it happens. If you are there and you're talking to people and you're talking to sellers and you're being active and you're being involved and you're looking for deals, eventually you're going to find something. I don't know any, any person that seriously looked for a deal and, and didn't find it. I don't know anybody like this. Tal, tal, what happened to the seller if he cannot take the refinance and also he cannot sell the property? He will sell the property and I'll explain to you why. We'll go back to our Excel, okay? So you're gonna, you're gonna sell the property, let's say for $3.1 million. You're gonna have, uh, uh, why it doesn't write down? You guys see something? I don't see anything for some reason. We see it. Oh, here we go. So, cost of sale. Will be about 8%, right? Louis. So you're gonna clear about, I don't know, 92, 93% of it. I have no idea what's going on here now. That's a 93% of it. You're gonna clear a 9.2, right? He has a debt. He has a debt that is two point five, right? I'm gonna clear four hundred twenty thousand dollars. Now he put in the deal three years down the road. How much did he put in the deal? He lost four hundred thousand dollars. That's what will happen. I can tell you that this week, this week, I. I got uh, uh, a, an offer to buy a, a strip here in New Jersey, a mall strip, $17 million. They bought it for $3.5 million. They are clearing $236,000 a year. Even if you take it at cap five, $236,000, how much is it? Cap five. Four point six. How much? Four point six. Four point six. They bought it for thirty million dollars. Wow. This is where we are. And they want seventeen now. I asked for an explanation. How can they can uh, justify this price? Never got an answer. Hi, so Sarit. Hi. Costa, uh, Shalek. Sarit asked me what uh, software you, I'm using to see this. It's called Costa. Cost about 10 grand a year to have access to Costa, but it's magic. And it's only for commercial properties in the US. Say it again, it's only for what? Commercial. Only for commercial real estate. Commercial like means a, also multi- It's like a property shark, but for commercial. So it's, but commercial includes multifamilies, right? Not just office and retail. Commercial by definition, sorry. Commercial by definition is everything that have more than four units. Okay. So if you have one building, five apartments, that's commercial real estate. Right. In other words, even though they're residential rentals, if it's 10 residential rentals, it's commercial. Everything over four units 
automatically commercial. If it's below four, if it's below four, if it's only apartment, it's residential. If it's below four, but there is an office or a store, it's also commercial. So everything under four that is, that is not just apartments, commercial, everything is over four, no matter what it is, it's automatically commercial. So under residential properties, there is only four type of properties goes under residential, four, we can say five. Everything that is one to four units, that all of them apartments and condos. Condos courts, which is the same. Sure. כלומר, okay. Okay, you, you guys need to understand something and I, and I wonder, I'm trying to do that. So, so what, Gil what, what was the question? Is, what was the question? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. What Gil said is that we are used to the fact that real estate doesn't go down in value. So what caused a building like this go down in value? And the answer is one, as a fact, that's not true. Usually, uh, here I'm repeating it, uh, David. The question was, we are used to the fact, that's what Gil asked. So he said, we are used to the fact that real estate value always goes up, uh, especially in Israel. Most of the participants here in the Zoom, most of them are in Israel. In Israel, values for real estate usually goes up because real estate is very, uh, the ability to develop real estate in Israel is very limited. There is a, a, a big a, a, a shortage in, a, a, in real estate in Israel. So uh, the common uh, 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 sentiment is that value of real estate goes up. So I said, if this is a common sentiment, what causes, uh, what causes real estate to go down? Uh, and the answer to your question again is one, real estate not always goes up. That's a misconception. If you ask people in 2007, eight, what happened to the real estate values, I promise you they're gonna tell you it's not went up. In general, over a long period of time, the general idea is that it's gonna go up, but if you're gonna look in a, small, a smaller segments of time, we'll see that there is drops. Okay, that's crashing real estate. You can talk about 2000 and uh, the beginning of the 2000, when the uh, 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 dot com uh, 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 dot com bubble burst, uh, there was uh, there was an issue with real estate prices. Uh, obviously, two thousand and eight, two thousand and two thousand seven, two thousand and eight. You're gonna go back to the eighties when they took the uh, uh, tax advantage. So, so there is a bunch of reasons why. In our specific case, it's the cost of financing. We need to understand something, and this is very uh, important. I'm gonna to try to give you a different uh, view of real estate because we said a lot of time, oh, real estate, real estate. And in English, I like it. It's called commercial real estate. Why it's commercial real estate? It's a business, okay? So take a look and think what can cost a business, the value of business to go down. And usually the value of business uh, comes for how much money it makes. So if something makes less money, it's worth less. Okay, think about it this way. If the cost to operate, my business goes up, interest rates goes up, my cash flow, how much money I'm making from this business will go down. And if it goes down, down yeah. my value goes down. Okay, real estate, commercial real estate, it's a business and the business is the business of rating space. That's what it is. 
It's the business of renting space. And the value of it is NOI, how much money I'm making out of it, divided by how much return do I want, that is a value. If the NOI changes, in this case, and the cap rate, by the way, the NOI didn't change here, the cap rate actually did, because the interest went up, cap rate went up. Cap rate went up, value goes, goes down. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I'm, uh, okay. Uh, David, I hope you understand the question what I answered. Give me a thumb up if you do, or just let me know. Thank you, sure. Uh, more questions? Yeah, I got another one. Sure. Um, so we obviously gonna see some ripple effects. Uh, I can so, think of the so bank. Sorry, I didn't We're gonna see some ripple effects. Okay. And my question is, well, I, how do you think it's gonna affect residential real estate? I know it's gonna affect the banks, but what's gonna happen in my I, world? I, I believe, <laughs> I believe that if this is gonna escalate and it's gonna be more than a year or two, you're definitely gonna be, gonna see the effect on residential as well. Because now people are gonna come and say, screw that, instead of paying a million dollars for a house, I can buy a building. Or right. the prices for, 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 for whatever it is, is lower or and I'm going to say, or and I am a commercial real estate and I'm making less money. I just lost millions of dollars. That is, is a downturn of the entire economy, not just commercial. That's going to affect, try to imagine, there is one and a half trillion dollar of real estate in problem. One and a half trillion. This is a big slap to the economy as it's gonna, I'm gonna say uh, trickle into the, into the economy. That's right. so much money, people losing so much money, so much net worth gonna be wiped. So that means that the interest rate's gonna stay up probably for a while, actually the mortgage rate, but also, but it's not gonna solve the supply and demand issue in, residential that it's not gonna not gonna solve but let's say you own a you own a building that you can finance and you need to close a loan either and you own a house uh, right now and you lost a lot of money one maybe you're going to be forced to sell you're going to go to foreclosure we're going to start seeing foreclosure if you are personal guaranteed to a loan they might come for your house Try, most of this loan have personal guarantee. Now, I hope that the bank gonna come and say, okay, we're gonna stop at the building. And we'll take the building, we're not gonna... One second, David, I'll, I'll uh, there, I saw it. Let's all, okay, on commercial loan, there is something called recourse and non-recourse. Non-recourse means the building is a collateral to the loan, that's it. This is where it ends. And most of them, or a lot of them, have what's called a recourse loan, which means me as a, as a borrower, even the fact that it's a building, I personal guarantee the loan, which means everything that I personally own is a collateral to this loan. And if the bank decide it can come up for my house. It can come for my toothbrush. It can come for my, 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 my car. So if now we have a lot of people that own a lot of money and the bank decided to come up earlier, they can force you to sell your house to pay whatever you owe them if you can cover even the loan. And we saw that some of them not going to be able to cover even the loan. I don't think it's going to happen to that extent, but it's a possibility. And the fact that a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money and on the other end, on the other end, a lot of builders are going to start flooding the market with properties. You can see an effect of residential. Mm -hmm. 
I think you'll see eventually you're going to see uh, effect on this. Well, I mean, we're already seeing a decreased uh, level of inventory. The thing is that the, the level of buyers is also decreasing. So the prices haven't yet caught up and haven't started to go down. So there's yeah. already in residential real estate. That's what I'm seeing. Well, in residential, yeah, you have to see. Yeah, a lot of uh, builders are going to go to new construction. New construction, you see actually elevation in, in, in the amount of deals. You, in new construction, you see elevation. In uh, 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 resale of properties, uh, uh, it's a decrease because less property is coming to the market. But if you're looking only on the new construction market, uh, you can see uh, an increase in, in the amount of deals because there is a, there is a, a need for... for so, so the property. opportunity is in, in buying grits and, and investing. Grits are in trouble. David, what was your question? Take yourself out of the uh, mute and you can ask your question and we can hear it. Kyle, thank you for getting back to me. Um, I wanted to go back to the spreadsheet. Now, you mentioned that based on the math, that the only way that equation or that property in, in general to pay the balloon off, to pay the, 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 the mortgage off, is by only selling the property and he or she will be taking a loss or they, sorry, he, she, they will be taking a loss. Okay. I like you to trying off, to be correct? inclusive, he or she. Uh, you got to be careful these days. You know, you got to yeah, respect yeah, that. No, it's not. Yeah, I like it. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. So, just oh, want to unless, confirm. But basically. Unless he can come up with 400 grand out of his pocket. He but let's, say, let's say, say you own say the property. Me, you and Louis buy it. Let's say me, you, me, you and Louis buy it. We all split the, the percentage down. We don't have that cash. So our only solution in that moment is the small investors, the other gentleman would say, we put all our sort of equity into this property. Now we're in the red. So you only thing sell, we can, can do sell is sell. You can sell ownership. Sell, okay, we can sell the ownership to any other investors that want to come in and pick up our, our slack and our shares will be diluted or how does that work? Yes, exactly. Your share going to be the ownership going to be diluted. You can bring another investor to somebody. Okay, this building worth, let's say for the argument, uh, 3.1. We have $2.2 million in loan, which means we have about $900,000 between the three of us. We have $900,000 in equity, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are, we decided that this, lot, this property worth now uh, $3,150, okay? Market mm -hmm. value is $3,150 because no investor is going to come in. So, and we have a loan of $2.2 million. So we have that, not that, and each one of us uh, uh, own, there is a three of you or three of us or whatever you want, the three of us, okay, $312,000. Okay, we need $400,000. So each one of us, and we have 33% each, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you need to, out of this, one second, I'm sorry. So now you need you 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 need now four hundred and eleven thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Which is percentage wise. So you need to sell forty four percent of your ownership now. So forty four percent of the ownership divided that by three. Each one of you are gonna have to give some. Uh, some of the ownership could get to 44% and sell it to somebody. And at least you didn't sell the property, wait for a better time to refinance and get the money back. So th this would be the safest and more more logical sense I, to sell to open investors and if you instead of going to the banks and taking a loss. You're taking a, you don't taking a loss here, but you're taking a loss in a different way because you, you just diluted yourself. Yeah, correct. Correct. You still, you so still now, spend $800,000 on it. So this would probably be the best solution. It's a shop to deal around with other investors it, who are willing to It's a to solution. I don't know if it's the best yeah. but solution. So what would you say, worst case scenario, we do this and then the new owner comes in. What's to stop, stop them from taking their share out? Or, or what? what's the worst case scenario with an outside investor coming in after we dilute our, our shares down? I didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. All right. So let's say John. John comes in tomorrow and he goes, okay, I'll give you the 400000 and he gets 39% ownership. Okay. How can John take – how can I explain this? In the pseudo language, how can John screw us over? 
and down the road. That depends on the, what what agreement you have with him. Got it. So Jack it, can the, come the in. The question if he can screw you over or not depends on on your agreement with him. Because if you come and say, listen, you are 40%, we are 60%, so we control the deal, he can screw you Correct. over because he doesn't have any any uh, ability to do anything. If you come and Correct. you say, so, you know what, uh, you have the right to sell your share in every given moment, and tomorrow you're going to sell it to uh, El Capone, and El Capone is going to come to you in the, in the night and leave a, 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 a head of a horse in your bed in order for you to sell your deed to him or transfer his, your share to him, you screw it. So it depends on okay. who you're doing, doing business. Depends who you're getting in bed with, basically. With him, whatever. All right. that, that, that's kind of the worst case scenario in today's world. Because, you know, you do have a lot of people that take advantage of first-time investors and they see that they're not as savvy. So... Obviously, they come in, like you said, worst, worst case, you know, God forbid that happens is they share their, they sell their shares to somebody, they come, take the deed away from them, God bless. Yeah. Um, so, okay. But this is this is what you described is like selling the property, but just not all of it. Got it. So it's, the same, pro it's the same problem because try to imagine it, it, it's exactly the same, it's just part of selling. Because try to imagine that theoretically, what you thought, what you thought that you're gonna have was a value of you thought that you have 30% of 1.2 and you have 30% of 900. You still mm -hmm. took a loss. Right? 400,000, mm -hmm. okay, 400,000 from this is only 30%. 400,000 of what you have right now is 40 something. So you took a loss, you just take, I'm, I'm going to take a partial loss versus a full loss. Okay, honestly, thank you. So yeah, that, that was my question regarding the solution. If, if it was something outside of just selling to the bank, so just taking a loss. So this this answered my question. Yeah. It's like another anchor to, to save the drowning, it, the drowning individual. Yeah, the advantage of this kind of a solution is that you can take the time now, five, six years, or three or four, whatever it is, and recover at least part of it once interest is going to go down again and the value is going to jump back again. Understood. You need to understand you. if you bought it for now for 3.1 and five years down the road, interest goes down to four, suddenly jump from 3.1 to 3.8. So the, exactly the opposite will happen five years down the road if interest will go down. Understood. So then you're just building? carrying the building and, and managing it for five years. Hoping, yeah, without right making here. money. Try to imagine something like this, guys. Okay? So I bought it now. Okay? So I bought it now for $3.1 million here. Okay? And now I'm going to hold it for five years. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Can't, can't, can't see the screen. screen. Ah, sorry. One second. Let me... Uh, I'll show you the screen again. Exactly down the road five years, the opposite gonna happen. And this is why it's such a big advantage. Now, if you can you can find this deal. So let's continue five years down the road, okay? And my NOI is 6%. The interest rate goes down. And we're going back to a cap rate of 6%. What will be my value, my value, my value in five years? I bought it here for how much? 3.1. 4.33 million. Because, and the value went up, not because the NOI went up, it's because the cap rate goes down. You guys understand what I'm saying? Can, can you explain that again, please? I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, because I it, saw that the cap it, rate stayed it, the same at 6%. Second. The 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 uh, what in, what the increase formula, was the NOI? The value, yeah. One second, Julius. 
the for for formula for value is MOI divided by cap rate equal uh, equal uh, uh, equal uh, value. MOI divided by cap rate equal value. Okay, so that means let's go back one second to our. I'm sorry. This is a PowerPoint. Yes. This 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 is our this is our a uh, formula, which means cap rate is MOI divided by value. Yeah, I move this this way and I move value the other way. So MOI divided by value is equal cap rate, right? So now right. let's go back. Let's go back to our, our example. If I'm buying it for 3.1, if the NOI is 225, like it says here, 225, and I'm buying it, we said 3.1 something, so let's do 3.2 million dollar. What is my cap rate? At what cap rate I'm buying it? Seven. Seven percent, right? I'm going down the road. Interest rate goes down. Cap rate goes down. I'm doing six point there, so my NOI went up and my cap rate. And this went up, and cap rate went down. Value will will go up. We have the same page. But yep. why the noise went up? I didn't understand. What? Why the noise went up? Can we agree that I'm buying this property for seven seven percent cap or fear? Yes. Okay. If the cap the NOI rate... went up just on a annual uh, three three percent uh, assumption. NOI ah. goes up just that 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 day. inflation. Okay. If if the cap rate was six, the value of this building was so when N when cap rate goes down, value goes up. Mm -hmm. When cap rate goes up, value goes up. What's gonna happen if interest is going to go down? What will happen 10 years down the road? Two things that hurt me. NOI went up and cap rate went down. And when went up, cap rate went down, value will go, value will go up. Now to understand how much this is important, I'll explain to you. From this year to this year, how much NOI I'm clearing here? $5,000, above $6,000. $6,000 in a 1% difference in NOI, $6,000 a year equals in value of the building, $600,000. So every $6,000 in net NOI equals in value 600 grand. You know, teach me that, Louis. The Hasidic in Brooklyn. I couldn't <laughs> understand when I was a rental agent, I couldn't understand why the Hasidic insists that the apartment is going to stand empty for six months, but they're going to get the rent that they wanted. I said, you're losing in rent more than, more than, than somebody came up and said, oh, I'm going to offer $500 or less. And they said, no. So you're losing a year of rent. And what I didn't understand that what they are looking is a refinance because this $500 worth in value $50,000. So they, for them over there, maybe they lost $6,000 in rent, but they gain what? $50,000 in value.
that I learned from the Hasidic in Brooklyn. Okay. Well, I think you might have, uh, what? I think it might not be the right uh, way to calculate it. That's exactly I think the right way like, to calculate it. Because look, if you do six thousand, let's go back to the to the other example. Here we go, six thousand. Six thousand on a seven percent cap rate. Okay, do how it. much? Seven percent. One you? second. Seven percent cap rate. So the value of six thousand will be. That's just the value, eighty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. And if you do the six, yeah, yeah, a new calculation, six thousand divided second, by six percent. Okay. One second. Maybe I did the, the it's 50,000. Uh, maybe the number was wrong, but the idea is the same. Yeah, the idea is correct. It's just yeah, 50, not, so I'm uh, sorry, the idea was correct, but $50,000. Why did one? I know it maybe do, did 100%. But it, that, that's the difference. So you have uh, uh, yeah, 6,000 like uh, that. I'm sorry. I did the, the percentage was wrong. But that, that the idea. So that's over. Now take a building that you have 20,000. Let's, let's do you do $500 a month or $200 a month. Try to imagine like this. Let's say I have a difference of $200 in rental. Over a year of that, it's $2,400, right? So this $2,400 worth about 6,000, but I have 28 units, a building. We're now changing the subject a little bit. This is why, by the way, it's very important to, uh, to raise rent to the people that, oh, it's a good tenant. I like him. They don't understand that where, where they are losing money is not on the rent, is on the value. So now I lost about $300,000 in value on this $200 in rent difference. So people, oh, it's a good tenant. I'm not going to raise the rent. So in a building, the extent to a building, you have a difference of uh, how much? A quarter of a million dollar over this $200 difference per unit? You lost $160,000 in valuation. Who wants to think $200 worth $160,000 in valuation? This is why, by the way, you raise rent, not because that's the main reason. In commercial, we're talking about commercial. This is the main reason you raise rent. Rent equal value. Tal, for me as a as a transaction agent right now in this market, what you're saying is that even at a loss, everybody's gonna mostly have to sell no matter what. So I should be chasing after these buildings like I'm, you know. Everybody, everybody that comes to maturation in the next two, three years is a fair game. Because a lot of them are gonna be in trouble. I'm not gonna say all of them, but a lot of them. You know what? When I started doing this and I used to take 60% LTV, and everybody like, oh, this is low. Like I prefer, that was exactly the reason why. That was exactly the reason why all of our properties, all of our deals, low LTVs. I think I have right now, I'm taking the highest LTV that I ever took, which is 70%. And I'm doing it because the interest is already high. So from there it's down and I have a great, uh, a great uh, debt service covered ratio. So even if they're gonna go down, you wanna see it? If you guys are interested, I'll show it to you. We way past what we wanted. So ever want to uh, finish what I'm just discussing? Uh, discussing. So this is a deal that I'm doing now. This is the highest LTV that I took ever, which is seventy percent, and I'm doing it because the interest rate is relatively high. So I'm expecting it to go down over the next fifteen years that I have this loan. So you can see here that I have a. Uh, it went down, we did 70% now at 
This is a wrong. Uh, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm Kyle, looking. I'm sorry, man. It, it's so small on the screen. No, no, I uh, I did the wrong. Uh... So that I, I I I did the wrong exam. Sorry, I'm for I I'm gonna apologize. Let me. Here we go. Here we go. So this is what we have. This is the loan that we have now. So I took 70% over, uh, it's still small probably, you know? You guys see it or the... You can zoom it a bit. Let me, okay. So this is a loan that we're doing now. This is a loan that we're doing now. So we have 70%, $840,000. You guys saw the, the at 7% 7 So I, I have a debt service. The requirement for the bank is 1.2, I'm at 1.35. So I have a lot of cushion. So even the interest rate is gonna go down. So let's look five years down the road. I'm talking about 75% at 6%, but because I know that I have this cushion, I'm gonna come and say, okay, what happened down the road? Uh, interest has goes up. So the bank not gonna give me, let's say it goes up to 8%. I'm, my debt service just dropped. To one, so we just said I can get it right. So I'm gonna go okay, 65 percent. I'm not good enough, right? 60 percent. Here we go. So I'm 60 percent and eight percent. I'm still above what I owe. So I'm in the clear. So you when do I'm have to adjust the cap rate model, as well. I'm looking it, uh, not just what happened now, I'm looking what happened down the road when I need to refinance this deal. You need to adjust the cap rate as well uh, on the on the refinance. What? You need to adjust the cap rate. It doesn't well. matter. If I'll, do, I'll adjust it, I'm going to get a higher LTV. I'm going to get a higher LTV, but my loan's still going to be more than enough. Sure. You see, now I'm that, so I can take a higher LTV. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when I'm doing my financial model, I'm not looking only now. I'm looking on all maturity days. Oh, what's going to happen then? Do I have this cushion to play around and pay it if there is, if the market goes south versus just improving, improving, improving? So Gil, to your question, what happened if market goes down? This is something to consider. If you want all the long period of time of commercial real estate, you need to ask yourself what happened five years down the road. I can, I, I, have a... I can go here, I can go here. So I think uh, almost 50% at 9%. And I'm still good. Look, my ROI that didn't even change much. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about your infinite rate. Um, when do you usually uh, refi on a deal like this to to pay your investors out? My investor get money uh, on a regular. That's different question. My my investor get a, a on a quarterly basis, so they're getting from the. Uh, they're getting money from the uh, from the cash flow. Uh, if there is a cash flow that month or that year or that quarter, and then when we refinance, uh, when they refinance, by the way, there is deal that doesn't go the way that you uh, you and the cash flow goes down or goes up or whatever it is, uh, and then not on a regular basis, not the investor get paid a little bit different than what you expected. 
But the idea is to look at it on the long term and said, okay, on the long term, is that deal works or not? And you take discussions. And over time, especially Corona, what we started to do is taking wider and wider cushions. Thank you so much, brother. Hey, what did I do here? I did something here. Questions, more questions, general questions? No, okay, perfect. Guys, first of all, thank you very much for coming. Uh, wherever evening, uh, middle of the day, whatever it was, thank you very much. Uh, you guys can approach me if there is more question you guys like. Uh, uh, I'm happy to hear David. Uh, David Rodal, that was super helpful. I'm, uh, I'm happy to hear that was the idea. If you guys have any more question, you want to approach me, somebody think about it, whatever it is, I'm going to upload, I'm going to send everybody a link to this recording. I'm going to upload it to my YouTube. So you can go in my YouTube and take a look. Uh, most of it in Hebrew, some of it in English, some of the videos are in English. I try to explain it. Uh, and again, if there is more question, but more than happy to help. All right? Guys, thank you very much. Go find yourself. Thank you, Tal. If you need help, let me know. Thank you, Tal. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye.